Floyd Mayweather just put his house in Beverly Hills on the market for sale. He's asking $48 million and he is looking to double his money on this deal. I honestly have never really paid all that much attention to Floyd Mayweather. He's just really never been on my radar. But for a guy who has the nickname Money, I guess it comes as no surprise that real estate is kind of part of his money-making strategy. It turns out that Floyd owns mansions all over the country, including LA, Las Vegas, and Miami. Plus, he supposedly owns nine skyscrapers, at least according to some reports. We'll take a closer look at that in a minute. In today's episode, let's talk about all of the real estate that Floyd Mayweather is wrapped up in and take a look at the $50 million house that he just put on the market. Like I said, going into this video, I didn't even know all that much about Floyd Mayweather. So let's just take a look at the highlights of his life really quick, just to understand how he can even afford all of this real estate. Floyd was born in February 1977 in Grand Rapids, Michigan, which makes him 47 years old today. He had a family full of boxers. Boxers had been basically part of his life since he was a kid. He even ended up dropping out of high school to focus more on boxing full time. From 1996 to 2017, Floyd fought as a professional boxer who won 15 major world championships over five boxing classes and he ended up retiring from the sport with an undefeated record. How, how much do you work to prepare for, like, how, compared to your competitors? Like, because they all say they work hard, they train hard. No one works harder than me. So yeah, he was a boxer for 11 years, and I know there's good money in boxing, but how much money do you really make as a boxer? Well, the answer to that question is, it depends, but Floyd was one of the best defensive boxers in history. He is extremely talented and entertaining, and because of that, his events are some of the most lucrative pay-per-view events that happen. You know, the first time, what I did, how I got to where I got to, was I looked at certain athletes' career. And I said, I don't want to end up like that. Floyd has generated at least a billion dollars in revenue throughout his career. So yeah, there's a lot of money in boxing, even more money in boxing. If you're Floyd Mayweather, at this point, he can afford basically anything he wants in the world. Any of you guys who have been following know that Floyd is definitely a big spender. Money made, money made, money made all day. You know right here, a light million. I don't know about nobody else, but money made, love his sneakers. My most expensive watch that I currently own is 18 million. One watch. One watch. We got options, options, options. I got about 100 cars. Typically when I see an athlete who's spending out of control like this, I kind of get a pit in my stomach thinking like, oh man, they're definitely on the verge of bankruptcy at some point. This is not going to end well. But remember, Floyd invested a bunch of money in real estate as well, so let's get into that next. Back to the main story here, Floyd has got a couple mansions, but he just put his Beverly Hills home on the market. Like I said at the beginning, he's asking $48 million. This house actually has an interesting story too. Niall Niami bought it in 2014 for $16.5 million. He rebuilt a new spec house on the lot, and then he sold the place to Mayweather for $25.5 million cash in 2017. 17, just a few years before Floyd retired. Here's the listing. It is a six bedroom, 9.5 bathroom, 15,000 square foot house. They're asking $3,180 per square foot, which is absolutely wild. Like out here in Arizona, if you're buying in the most exclusive area and the best house that you can get, you're going to spend like maybe $1,500 a foot. So to see $3,180 a foot is mind-blowing. Josh Altman has the listing. I feel like from the Million Dollar Listing show, maybe him and Floyd were friends or something. For some reason, I'm not surprised that he has the listing here. Honestly, from the street, it's kind of unassuming. Like, does this look like a $50 million house to you? No. The backyard's cool. I really like the striped pavers. I've never seen that before. I'm actually kind of curious too, how much of this house was what Niall did compared to what changes did Floyd make to it? In the dining room, we got a bunch of natural light, some more really nice trim work, and check out the finish on that fireplace. Really nice fireplace. I love how that marble contrasts with the black cabinets. Another living room. This feels probably more like the actual living room big wine cellar off the living room. Let's see if we can get a closer look at that. Here's the living room looking down into the kitchen and something else I'm noticing here that's interesting to me is that I think we're only working with 10 foot ceilings in here, which is decent, but in a $50 million house, I don't know. 
That feels a little tight to me. We got a grand staircase taking us to the upstairs. Look at this little decoration here underneath the staircase. Like, do you think that Floyd actually takes the time to light every one of these candles every night? I doubt it. I'm noticing a lot of consistency with the fireplaces. This is the second time we've seen this marble detail and also the second or third time that we've seen this like reflective mirror on the back side of the fireplace. Master bath is huge. What I like is the floating vanity. I like this tub. I like these towel racks that are hanging from the ceiling. That's pretty cool. But I will say it might just be the camera angle, but it feels like there's a ton of wasted space in this bathroom. Some random extra bedroom. This is probably the bathroom that goes with that bedroom. Some details in here that are nice that you might look past are the backlit mirror. That's a nice touch. That requires a little extra electrical work, but it's worth it. And then look at the sink in here. The sink is the same material as the countertop. Tricky to pull off, very expensive, very nice touch. Oh my gosh. I think this might be one of the most impressive laundry rooms we've ever seen on the channel. I don't even remember the last time I've seen an island in a laundry room. This is probably a guest suite. It feels like a hotel, right? It's got the little wet bar, the microwave, I'm assuming the bathroom down that way. Of course, this house comes with a movie theater, very nice. And then you also got a little snack station on your way into the movie theater. Also awesome. Then they rounded out with some nighttime shots and I've gotta say, you can really take a house to the next level just with some landscape lighting and like some fire fixtures and stuff like that. Nice house, I'm still having a bit of a hard time wrapping my head around this price, especially considering that we're only sitting on about a half acre here, but as they say, location, location, location. It's hard telling exactly why Mayweather is selling this house. I mean, he can certainly afford it, but I don't know, maybe he's just not spending as much time in LA anymore. I mentioned earlier though that he also has a mansion in Miami Beach. This one he picked up for $18 million back in 2021. Somehow all the photos of this one are still up on Zillow, which is super rare. Typically Zillow takes down the photos on these like celebrity owned homes, but it's a nine bedroom, 11 bathroom, 11,000 square foot house. This is like the epitome of a Miami mansion. It's right on the water, place to park your boat, you got the swimming pool lit up like neon blue. Tons of privacy from your neighbors by all these palm trees. Here's the view from your deck. Awesome. From the street, it's kind of funny. This house actually looks very similar to the one in LA. Remember, this is the old listing, so it's full of what looks like a bunch of grandma furniture. I highly doubt it still looks like this with Floyd living here. Sweet view from your kitchen island. And I really like how it's pretty much all white in here, but then you've got like the walnut trim around the window and door frames. It's a nice touch. The kitchen's not bad, but let's be real. This kitchen is tiny for a $20 million house. Here's the dining room. Floyd upgraded this place massively by just removing this hideous furniture for sure. Another one of those grand curved staircases that takes you to the upstairs. Huge master suite with a balcony looking out to the water and out to the cruise ships it looks like. When you're building a house on a location like this, you're gonna have views from basically every room in the house. It's like mandatory. Not much to look at here. Here is the guest room and the guest bathroom. Another very small guest room and another guest bathroom. So the balcony handrails are glass. It looks great, because look, from this angle, you're looking straight down into the water. Like if that was a fixed panel, you would not be looking at the water. But what a nightmare to have to keep all that glass clean. Here's the home gym. I'm willing to bet that Floyd probably kept this as the home gym when he moved in. We got a little lounge ping pong slash theater area off the pool room. I mean, these photos just go on and on and on. And I'm gonna say it again, the house probably looks very different since Floyd bought it. He's got basically an unlimited budget, so I would guess that he probably moved in here. He refurnished it at minimum, but he probably freshened up some of the finishings inside the house too, but awesome place. I cannot imagine how cool it would be to live right on the water on this private gated island in Miami with views like this. I mean, come on. Miami Beach House is cool. I definitely consider it a trophy property, but if we go back even a few years more to 2018, we can see the house that Floyd bought in Las Vegas. No interior photos of this house, but records say he paid an even 10 million for it. It's got five bedrooms and eight bathrooms. Inside, there's about 8,000 square feet of living space. It comes with this crazy covered grand entrance. It almost feels like a Las Vegas casino. The lot is huge. This house is sitting on 1.4 acres. And it's interesting, actually, this whole thing is kind of built around this central courtyard where the swimming pool is. So it's super private. No sign of Floyd wanting to sell the Vegas or the Miami house anytime soon, but what is that? He's got like $80 million worth of just residential real estate alone. Next though, I want to look at those claims that he also owns a bunch of commercial real estate. From the beginning, the first, the, the first time I invested, 
My first investment was real estate. Wow. I went from um, commercial real estate, huge, um, skyscrapers, actually. So I own, actually, what you're I own. You're bragging now. No, I'm not now bragging. Now you're bragging. No, no. What you can I, brag, man. Shit. No, no, no. Actually, what I, what I own right now is nine skyscrapers. And um, I'm, I'm, building, I'm building my 10th skyscraper right now. So I own nine skyscrapers. And I'm building my 10th skyscraper. This whole skyscraper situation is a bit of a mystery, but one of the skyscrapers that Floyd revealed that he owned in a podcast is the One Vanderbilt building in Manhattan. This is one of the most iconic and recognizable buildings in the city. And I don't want to say that I'm a skeptic here, but I am a little bit confused about this whole situation. So, of course, I had to dig in just a little bit further. Let's put it this way. Floyd Mayweather has made over a billion dollars in his career. His total net worth is something like $400 million as of the last couple reports that I could find. Then you look at a building like One Vanderbilt. This building cost over $3.3 billion to build just this one single building alone. So when we know how much it costs to build a skyscraper, especially one in New York, how is a guy worth $400 million able to own not just one skyscraper, but nine? Well, there have been a bunch of critics on this topic since he made those comments. One person uncovered that Mayweather did not own one Vanderbilt outright. He just invested $50 million into the project. So here's the deal. Mayweather gets some critiques from people out there Anyone at his status is going to get critiques, especially when he's living a life like he lives and he's putting it in people's faces. He's a very braggy guy, even though sometimes he likes to say that he doesn't brag. It is just kind of his way of being with the way he dresses, with the cars he drives, with the houses that he owns. So all that being said, I think that when Mayweather shared that he owns nine skyscrapers, it probably actually means that he just invested in a fund who owns nine skyscrapers. You can't really blame the guy. It's just kind of how it goes. It's similar to whenever you buy a house. Like, I'll sit here and say that I own this house even though I have a big loan on it. I only put like 10% down. So do I own this house or does Wells Fargo own this house? I guess it depends on how you look at it. Anyways, even if Mayweather only owns just a slice of nine skyscrapers, even if it's just a few percentage points, that's still pretty cool and I'm not gonna knock it. Let's just say that he put $100 million worth of his own money into these deals. You know, so what I did was this. It started off with $5 million. $5 million. Um, put up $5 million. I was getting uh, $50,000 a month. On, on every 18th, every month, it was paying off. You, you like the cash flow? For, yes, for years. Uh -huh. So I said, okay, if it's paying off like this, then, and I gave him seven figures, I said, I'm not going to even give him eight figures. I went and gave him nine figures. And let's say that that money is buying him an LP position in these nine different skyscrapers that are paying him like a 8% preferred return. That means that Floyd is making $8 million per year passively by just having his money invested into these skyscrapers instead of just sitting in the bank. Some people might argue that you would be better off putting your money in the bank at a 5% return the last couple years and not have to deal with any of the risk that's associated with owning skyscrapers full of a bunch of vacant office space. So let's face it, those 5% rates were temporary. They're already starting to come down. Plus, when you invest into a skyscraper, you get to brag about how you own a bunch of skyscrapers, and that's pretty cool too. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I'll see you next week.